Hi and welcome back to lesson 2 of Easy IELTS. In today's lesson we're going to have a second look at the line graph and give you a new example. As you may have noticed, today's line graph includes predictions of the future. Therefore, this will be the focus of today's lesson. Additionally, we will have another closer look at how for your paragraphs you will get from the graph to notes and eventually to your final sentences. Before we start looking at our new graph, let's shortly recap what we have learnt in our last lesson, in particularly the structure of the text. Now, as you remember, the text will be structured into four parts introduction, overview, followed by two detailed paragraphs. As we have learned in our last lesson, the introduction is just one sentence which rephrases the topic. The overview mentions the two main features of the graph, but don't actually give any specific numbers, while the two more detailed paragraphs should both consist from anywhere between four to five sentences and should mention even up to six numbers. By maintaining this structure, you will not only make it easier for your reader to understand the text, but it will also help you structure it and therefore write it faster. So let's start with our new example. Today's example talks about the average numbers of UK commuters travelling each day by car, bus or train. And the time frame it talks about is from 1970 to 2030. So it does make predictions about the future. Now for those of you who've never heard the word commuter, a commuter is somebody who travels into the city for work and out of the city to get home. But let's begin with our introduction. As you have learned last time, the introduction is very easily done by rephrasing the description of the graph. So let's have a look at that. I have chosen to replace the word show by compare, but you could also use illustrate or other words. Instead of using numbers, I have chosen to use figures. In both examples I have just given, I have used a synonym and it is very helpful if you know as many of those as possible. However, you can also simply rephrase certain parts. For example, in the graph's description it reads UK commuters travelling each day. Now, by re using the words travelling and day, I could rephrase it into daily travel by people in the UK. Lastly, generalising or writing certain parts of the sentence more specific will also help. In our example, instead of saying the graph, I will use the line graph, which is more specific. On the other hand, instead of using car, bus and train, I've decided to generalise it and use form of transport. Combining all of those techniques will allow you to change the description of the graph into your introduction for your analysis. Writing the overview is going to prove a little bit more difficult. Last time we talked about how there should be two main features named in the overview. In the example of lesson one, I told you that that could easily be achieved by using the highest and the lowest line. But as you notice, today's example does not have a lowest line. So how can we choose a second main feature? The answer can easily be found by instead looking at the trend, meaning the change over time. Accordingly, our overview will include the two main features of A, that the car is the most popular mode of transport, and B, that while car and train are used more increasingly, the bus is decreasing in use. Avoid repetition in our final text, let's have a short look at the top right corner. There you can see that instead of mode of transport, you could also use means of transport or form of transport, where transport could also be replaced by transportation. To give the paragraph a better sound and also to structure it a little better, remember to use such words as also or while. You may also emphasise certain facts, for example by using the words by far 
I have made sure the reader understands that the car is clearly the most popular mode of transport. By emphasising part of your text and structuring your paragraphs, you will achieve a higher level of writing and, of course, better marks. So let's keep to the structure of our text and start making notes for our two more detailed paragraphs. If you have a graph such as ours, which includes both numbers from the past and predictions of the future, I would highly recommend you use past and future as a division for your two paragraphs. For your paragraph about the past, I would recommend that you make notes on both the first year and the present year, and of course, any major changes in between. Your paragraph on the future will include the last numbers that the graph shows. However, extraordinary declines or rises should also be noted. While you are writing down notes for the paragraphs, do remember that you only have about 20 minutes for this writing task 1. So do not spend too much time on trying to find the exact number, but rather use estimates. Now let's have a look at our own example and go through it in a bit more detail. The starting year is the year 1970 and the last year shown in the graph is the year 2030. As I just said, I will divide up my paragraphs into past to about the present and then one paragraph about the future. So let's get started. In the year 1970 we can very easily find out how many people used which kind of transport. So the car users were approximately 5 million, the bus users we could estimate about to be 4 and the train users will say about 2 million. Same way we will now write down our estimates for the year 2000 which we have chosen as to be our present time. But very importantly we now also have to show the change over time. So let's have a look. The car users have clearly increased. At the same time the train was also used more frequently. But you will also notice that bus users have decreased. This concludes our notes for body 1. Now let's have a look at body 2. As previously said, here you can simply use the last year shown in the graph, but you should also remember that you need to name the change over time, so increases and decreases. In this case, car users are expected to rise up to 9 million, train users to 5 million, whilst the bus users are expected to decrease down to 3 million. It is very important to make those notes so you can easily write your sentences later. But do remember that you only have about 20 minutes for this writing task. So don't spend too much time on taking notes. So you have spent three minutes to write down the notes for your more detailed paragraphs. And now you have to translate them into sentences. While doing so, you must maintain a structure of your text. A good structure can easily be achieved if you follow the graph. In this case, for example, you simply go along the timeline. Accordingly, my first detailed paragraph starts with a sentence about the year 1970. The next sentences then talk about the year 2000, or put more generally, about a year fairly close to the present. In other words, the first detailed paragraph, which is generally talking about the past, starts out by naming the first year shown in the paragraph and then moves on towards a time fairly close to our present, this case 1970, and then onwards to 2000. Again, going along the timeline like this will help you structure your paragraph and your text and therefore will make your text sound better. Having a good structure in both your text and your paragraphs will not only help you write the text easier, but it will also make it much easier for the reader to understand. However, to make it interesting, you are going to need a good variety of structure in grammar and words. This variety can only be achieved by practice. Watching and reading English news 
will also help you bolster your vocabulary. So to have a look at our example, rather than using train users, I said rail passengers. To really understand the difference that this makes, just pause the video for a moment and read through the sentences at the top and then the final sentences at the bottom of this slide. It is quite a difference, isn't it? We have almost completed our entire text. All that is missing is the second detailed paragraph. Now, as before, we're going to put the graph aside and just look at the notes we made previously. To turn these notes into sentences, when you have a graph that talks about the future, use words such as expect, predict or project. And to give you a small final tip, when you have two opposite trends, use the words by contrast to indicate such. Your entire text is written down, but you are not done yet. Before you are finished, you should read through your text once or preferably twice. This will allow you to find any mistakes in both spelling and writing. Moreover, it will allow you to identify any passages which are not written properly where you have repetitions or the structure is not perfect yet. If you have the time, do correct it. This will help you greatly in improving your grade.